everybody welcome back to the bench so what I decided to do here uh, I actually decided to build two of the structure kits I need to kind of finish off the scene in a fair view I, I want to get these done so I decided to sit down come in the mood to uh, to get these built so okay so here's what I'm gonna do this will not be an actual how-to video on how to build a craft from the structure kit. I'm not qualified to do that. I'm just some moop building the layout, doing the best he can. But what I figured I'll do, so again, so this won't be a step-by-step. -step. So if, if you're looking for that, I apologize. I'm warning you right now, that's not what this video is. But since I'm going to build two of these kits from do, two different manufacturers kind of at the same time, what I figured I'd do is I'll kind of show you what I'm doing, my thoughts, some of the differences, similarities between the two kits, just kind of as a general knowledge informational type video for those that may be considering building a kit such as this. Uh, I have built several uh, branch line structure kits, um, laser art kits, American model builders, you know, that type of kit. But I think this is probably the first time I've tackled I guess what you call a true, you know, craftsman structure kit. Um, the first one I'm building is H.W. Myers and Son from South River Model Works. And the other one is the Winchenden Machine Company by Laser Modeling 3. Um, probably have heard of those two. I'm sure all the craftsman structure guys know these very, very well as well as some of the other well-known names out there. But these are the two I have because they're going to kind of fit in the area and the industries and the look that I'm going for over there in Fairview. So what I'll do is I'll kind of go through and talk about, again, I'm already already noticing some differences in the instructions, uh, in, in kind of the manner of how the kits are built, how the parts are supplied, the quality of the parts, the quality of the laser cutting, etc., uh, etc., et so it's going to be a little bit interesting in that regard. Again, not a step-by-step, -step, but both of these come with rather large, well-illustrated, uh, documented instruction books, that being the South River Kit and this being the Laser Modeling 3. So they're kind of similar in that regard. They also have several cards included that show you the various uh, pieces and parts and you know lay out the diagram so you know what part is what. The uh, two boxes themselves, just to show that. So that's the South River kit. Comes in a, in a nice nice box, actually. And then the Winchenden comes as well. Typical of these type of kits, I guess. Like, again, I'm no expert. You get all kinds of pieces and parts and baggies and windows. And that, don't mind the mess, because I've been working this and throwing stuff around. <laughs> making it more difficult on myself. You know, usually little packs of scale lumber. The Laser 3 kit did actually cut and, and individually bag a lot of the various little pieces. A lot of these are interior wall studs, which is one big difference <laughs> I'm noticing. The Laser 3 kit is much, much more detailed on the interior. And again, I don't know if that's indicative of the entire line or just this particular kit because these are the only only one of each that I've even attempted so but this is the the start here of the Winchenden building and it does start off with a plaster base which I don't like because it was cracked and then I broke it and I had to re you know re glue it and everything like that but okay I think it'll be fine I just don't like the, the plaster. It's kind of fragile. I can see some of the lines left in it where I had to fix it. And then I went through and painted it and weathered it and, you know, per my techniques. These guys give you pretty good in, in, information on the, on the techniques they like, which you certainly can follow. But I've got some of my own techniques. Now, I'm not trying to sound arrogant and, and that these guys are wrong. It's just, you know, we all have our certain ways we like to do things. And if, that, if you're more comfortable with it, there's no reason you can't do it that way. So that's how I kind of weather, detailed, um, dry brushed, etc. The, the to seem like the base on this one, and then you can see to the point where the floor, which was stained with an alcohol ink 
mixture, you know, dilution, and then all those internal rafters had to go in. And that is now ready to be glued onto the base. That's the next thing I'm going to do here is glue this in. And then there's some um, office interior. Again, this, this includes office interiors. includes all kinds of furniture, tables, chairs, drafting tables. Really, really, in, now you got to build it all. But a lot more detail is intended for this kit where the South River kit, no detail at all. It's basically build the four walls, no provisions for any interiors, no provision for any interior lights. And these guys actually have interior lights. You get lights in the kit. You get LED lights, and they tell you how you do fiber optic lighting. So it's much more interior detail oriented on the Laser Modeling 3 kit. Again, don't know if that's the same across all kits on both lines, but that's just what I noticed initially. Also on the Laser 3 kit, this is the interior office that I'm getting ready. They give you these little bags. Most of these are scale 2x6s for interior wall studs. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do all that. Like I said, part of what this video also will be will be how I get lazy and how I don't do what I'm supposed to do just to get the darn kits done. But <laughs> hey, I'm just being honest. So again, I'll, there's a ton of these interior studs to put in. I think it'll look pretty cool. But again, my mantra is if you're not going to see it or see it very well, do I really want to do it? Now, both these kits are going to be right in the front of the layout. So I may just go ahead and bite the bullet and do it. Just to say I did it, right? What the heck? It's provided for you. He tells you how to lay it all out. The interior walls are all scribed where they go. It's just a tedious manner of gluing on individual studs and on, on both <laughs> first, first floor, second floor. Ah! But really cool interior on this one. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. And again, like I said, the... South River kit, I have the walls started. That's all I've done so far is start the walls over here. I uh, got them filed and glued. Uh, not glued, but that's you know one of the front walls. You can see there's the, what the kit looks like back there if it's not too washed out. I do like the, the way that building looks. And you also get the coal silos and then another brick building as part of it as well. So it's not just, not just the one building. So these have all started and been, yeah, going the wrong way here. Oops. Okay. So they they do tell you how to brace everything. It gives you a slew of one eighth square strip wood, which I cut on the Northwest short line chopper. Makes it a lot easier. So all these are sitting here, kind of with uh, with that done, ready to be, you know, moved along. But again, no interior at, at whatsoever on this kit. So anything I do, and I do want to do things, because this is the side, well actually, if you look at that, that is the side that is going to face the, the front of the aisle, and be right at the aisle. So what I'm thinking of doing is having this open with an interior, little loading dock area, and having these two open. And then add lights, probably exterior, interior. So you can, you know, look in and see stuff. Because it literally will be right on the edge of the layout. Not sure I'm going to worry too much seriously about offices because those windows are so tiny. Maybe some lights, you know, a light here and there to simulate there's someone in the uh, in the building. I may add a door down here at this end, another loading dock door. Because the loading dock on the back is really kind of small. And for a rail industry, I think it might be bigger. So maybe so they, they extended it. They added a new door here, added a new platform off the back. And that would just be a matter of cutting in the door into the kit, which I don't think will be hard at all. Um, this right here. Yeah, that is that particular end wall in question. So there's plenty of room there, you know, to go ahead and add it, add some more, add it like a little, you know, loading area in, inside that. Some lights on the outside and a new platform that, so you can load you know, maybe maybe two box cars or something like that. Yeah, just for some more fun. So I'm considering doing that. On this particular kit, I noticed right away I don't really like it's got the typical titchy windows, which are fine. But he gives um white metal castings for the doors. I don't really like them. I mean they might look okay. Probably the ones on the back side. On this back side that are gonna be away from the aisle that you're never gonna see. I might use those. 
but I'm probably going to change these to be uh, grant line doors. They just look better. Um, I can model them open, which I want to do, which I'm not going to try to cut a white metal casting to make it look like it's open. But with the grant line doors, with a separate frame and door, I can have them slid open and then model the interior there. So I'm probably going to do that on this particular kit. All right, so I'm going to forge ahead here. Again, I'll kind of make things dark so you can't see what's going on. No, I'm just going to... Um, <laughs> right now I'm about to glue this onto the base. We'll see how that goes. Because that base is not perfectly level. And they even say that in the instructions. They say do not clamp it, otherwise the whole building will be warped. Kind of set it on there. The base is pretty darn flat and square itself, and then you fill any gaps, you know, with adhesive. I think they recommend using like a gel or heavy ACC to glue that down. So no clamping on that. But I'll do that. Then you put an office interior in and start working other areas as well. It's got all the rafters have to go across. So woohoo! This is a serious kit. Definitely interesting the difference between the Laser Modeling Three and the South River kit. So, all right. So again. Not, not going to be a how-to, more kind of an overview as I work through these two kits for my first attempt at building this type of kit from two different manufacturers. So just kind of we'll capture this, and uh, it might be interesting as people who are, again, the intent being people who maybe are aware of these, have considered it, might be intimidated by it, like I sure was for a while. But uh, you know what? If I can slog through it, I know you can. So uh, sit back, grab a coffee or other beverage, and follow me along in my first foray into being uh, a real uh, craftsman structure modeler. <laughs> At least we'll see how it turns out. All right, more to come as we work along here, folks. Okay, working a little bit more here on the Laser 3 kit. I have the first floor here glued to the plaster base. Eh, went pretty easy. I didn't clamp or anything. It's definitely not... Um, perfect fit. I don't know if you can tell just by holding the camera there, but there's definitely some gaps. I think those will be eventually covered up by the walls, or at least enough that you're not going to notice it. Uh, to glue it down, I use this stuff here. Loctite GO2 glue. That seemed pretty good. Worked very well. Almost kind of like a, uh, a gel type ACC. Although I don't, I don't think it really is by reading the what it is, it's not uh, a CA glue, I don't know what it is, it worked okay. And then I got the office walls installed. How well it is, easy it is to see that. Again, now things are getting a little more involved here. Um, I started with the, the instructions. One thing, the instructions do not give a lot of detail on how to do it. They just kind of say, uh, here's the photographs, put the walls in. Well okay but in front of the rafters behind the rafters and anyway again I, I'm not an expert at this so so I decided to put this one in first because it sits outside there thinking that if needed you know based on how that one sit if it pushed this one out too far I would be able then to you know to sand this side I want this nice and flush out here so that's why I put that one in first to kind of set the position of this I held it in might need a little bit of cleanup down here but not, I don't think a lot and then I went ahead and put in, let me spin this puppy here, Doo -doo -doo. I put this little one in here, because again I wanted to get this in and set, because then this one will kind of set, you know, how it's a right angle here, although you can see I made a mistake, which I think I did. I think this wall, which I have sitting in front of this upright should be behind it because if you look and it may be hard to tell it's it's not a perfect right angle it's not a plum it's the way I would build things that's the kind of guy I am <laughs> and that's exactly what I did see do it one to one scale do it in HO scale but it didn't really tell you that and uh, you're never really gonna see that either that's the other side now this side won't be seen because you won't be looking from this side when it's on the layout even though it will be close to the aisle, it's going to be sitting like that. So I'll be looking in a window here and a window here. 
And once, you know, the walls are on, the other floor is on, you're never going to notice that. Even if I put like you're just, you're just not going to notice it. So I was going to like, I'm going to rip it out. I was like, no, you're not. It's not going to be a big deal. Don't, don't panic there, Robbie boy. All right, so now... Oh, <laughs> another little fun little thing I did. This kit, I guess they include a lot of interior stuff, and they include a lot of the, the furniture as well. So I made a bookcase, a desk, a chair, and two racks. Took me a damn hour. So <laughs> these are all little individual pieces. You have to, you know, cut them out and glue them in. There's the uh, here are the sheets right here. I'm not sure how visible it may be, but you get you know the back and the sides and the two outer sides, all the shelves for the bookcase. You get the the front and the back four little pieces for the desk the top um it's oh good lord and then the chair the chair is four pieces too so like you know what this is one of those cases i kind of wish i had more interior furniture because i'm not sure <laughs> i'm gonna build all of those it's probably gonna take me freaking half hour per desk and there's like four thousand desks anyway, anyway there's not that many desks but uh, there's a bunch of them all right so what I'm going to do now, on this bottom first floor here is more the machine shop. And I, they do offer an interior kit for that, but I didn't buy it. I should have, but I didn't. What was me? So I did find a place where I have actually some interior machines coming. Some lathes and band saws and that kind of stuff to put them in there. So it might be a while until I get those. Or at least I'll you know, need to take a break. They, they have all the rafters going in next. I don't think I'm going to do them down here. It'll just be easier to place things. So I think I'll put me put the rafters across here. Once I get the office furniture in, the bookcase, the desk. I have another file cabinet I found on my bag of tricks to put in there. Um, and then maybe get these rafters in. And then kind of hold off until I get all those other interior details. And then time to move on to the South River kit. Do some work on that one. So, alright. Let's forge ahead here and more to come as we progress. Alrighty, so here we are now back on the South River Models kit. Things are pretty much ready now for starting to work on the walls, the uh, weathering, coloring, painting, etc., etc. That's the way that uh, South River has you do it. You do that first and then you build the building. So, okay. Now, before that, like I mentioned, I am going to modify this far end with another door and then extend the loading dock in the back. So that's been done. There's that piece. I have a cut open for a Grant Line warehouse door. What I also did, since I'm going to, uh oh, eBay notification. <laughs> Sorry, you had to hear that. I added in some more bracing, horizontal bracing, here and along the corresponding sides of these here. My thought being that if I do detail the interior and it'll basically be this part of the building so that door open that door open and that door open what I like to do when I do that is I'll you know put a floor down and put some details and light it and everything but then it sure makes it nice if I can put a roof on it or a ceiling on top of that it helps me in a couple ways a it kind of blocks light from just kind of shining up gives me a place to run wires and if I wanted to you know if once once I have that ceiling in there I can also partition off, say, one of these and have a light in it. I don't think I'm going to put interiors up here, but maybe a dim light just to make it look a dim bulb. Make it look like, you know, someone's up there doing some shenanigans there on the second story. So I think I'm going to leave that one closed, I think. We'll see. But definitely going to have this end open with the interior detail. So getting ready to do that by adding you know, the more bracing in here. So basically on this section, I can have a... A ceiling do the detailing lighting and then maybe you know wall things off for some lights on the upper side as well uh, in addition to that one of the bases these are urethane bases the, the thinner one here which is a brick a brick base for part of the building was slightly warped and it kind of 
even a little bit now, but it's, it's not nearly as bad as it was. So what I did was I put it in the microwave. Per their instructions in the book, heated it up, weighted it, uh, and actually it's a lot better. So I think it's, it's going to be fine. The other one was, was, was no issue. It's a little bit thicker, so I guess maybe the thinner one just tended to have a little, slight little bit of a bow in it. So, but that, that's been pretty much remedied. So now the next step on the South River kit is to stain the walls, let that dry, and then start doing the painting and weathering that they recommend. And I'm, I'm just going to follow along. Come over here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. They talk about it on several pages, how they recommend doing the pre-treatment and then following through with various paints, uh, heavy dry brush, basically. I'll get it. Okay, so I'll do all that. So that's coming up on the South River kit. Uh, this is, oh, one difference. Again, I'm kind of babbling here. The difference between the, this is the Laser 3, Laser Modeling 3 wall. You can see all the window openings are still in it. So you have to come through there and, and, and take your X-Acto knife and go through and pop them out like I did on these two. To see how the office would look. The, and on the South River kit, quick pan, they're already out. They're already popped out and they're nice and clean. And I'm assuming all the titchy windows are going to fit nice. So just a slight difference. I mean, not a big deal. You just got to, it's nicer. I prefer this, less cleanup. You know what I mean? It's just, it's already done for you. Seeing that I'm lazy. So, okay. But uh, so all these, I'll have to go back and get them all. Cut out, knocked out, cleaned up, most likely, to fit everything in. That's okay. Uh, like I said, that's got the the office is sitting in there. I got the rafters above that. I do have the one LED that I'll, we'll put above here to light the office. Uh, I did put a dab of the Tamiya clear orange on it to make them yellow, as opposed to the bright white, which just, you know, back in the late 50s, probably the wrong color lights. Not a huge deal, but I did it. I added a rack back there that was came with the kit. Uh, that's really, really fine. Again, more tiny little wood things here. And then I'll add some pipes or some, you know, tubes or wood or something like that in that rack once it sets up and dries inside. And then this is going to be on a little, probably a little bit of a hold until I get the interior machinery for down here. Because I'm not going to put all these rafters in and then try to work, you know, interior details in there. I want to get all that done, detailed, in, in and secured. Then do the rafters, then do the lighting, run the light wires, and then you continue on with the second story and actually start weathering the walls. Now, I'm looking ahead. There's things I can do. I can build two sets of stairs, all the furniture. So there's nothing that doesn't mean I'm going to stop work on this one. It's just the building itself is going to wait until I can get the interior details on the first floor done. Because, again, once those rafters go in, I don't want to be monkeying around in there. All right. Let's get back to work, and uh, more updates as we forge ahead. Ah, there's pieces everywhere. All right, so what I started doing the uh, for the South River kit, that's what all these walls are. Uh, they recommend the first step in the wall treatments to be give it a, a stain of the, they call it AI, which is the isopropyl alcohol mixture. So, okay, so I went ahead and did that. And they're setting up, and I'm looking at the instructions for the other kit, and they want you to pre-stain all kinds of huh, little lumber pieces everywhere, right? So, all right, I'm going to bite the bullet, just go ahead and do it. I'm kind of kicking back, waiting anyway for the other stuff to dry, so like I said, I'm waiting for the interior to get here, which just shipped today, so maybe I'll get to work it next week. So I got all kinds of goodies in here. <laughs> This is a staining festival of biblical proportions. So that's all sitting there drying up. There's more over here. And look at this wonkiness. Like, hey, like I said, we show you the good, the bad, and the ugly on this channel. Man, I, I put some stain on those. I turned around to get some weight, figured it might help, and boom! They were like Warp City. So, <laughs> now it's getting better. I'm hoping... Hoping that as it dries, it, it might come back into shape. If not, I'm going to be cutting individual, looks like 4x4s, or not even using it. This That's the interior framing for the boiler room 
on the laser modeling 3 kit. So hopefully that comes back a little straighter. Ay caramba! I said I'm no expert. Uh, the other ones are seem okay. I know they are flattening out a little bit. I, I did do both sides. Figured it would help a little bit. Um, yeah, so we'll see. So more boards over here. And more boards over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the long ones. Everything's got to be. So I think, I think, I have all the ones that need to be stained. So we'll see. All right, so let these set up or let them dry. You see I have all the little bags where they're labeled. I'll put them right back in the bag. They actually recommend in the, in the instructions to use an, an egg, egg carton for these little tiny little guys, which would have been smart, but I don't have any eggs. So, <laughs> you do what you gotta do. So they're everywhere! Alright, so let this dry up and then we'll, uh, probably the, the next thing I'm planning to do, although it might be tomorrow now with all this stuff drying up, is to start working painting the walls per the instructions for the South River Models Kit. Alright. Enough here from Warp City. We'll be back when things are de-warped. Alright, here is the the first layer of the weathering slash paint for the walls. And I decided to go with the Deco Art Heritage Brick for my particular building. And I, I did it, you know, exactly the way the instructions call for. Um, unfortunately, I can't show it very well because it's only me with a damn camera. But basically, I had to paint in a little cup and I would dip the brush and then kind of you can see I kind of it, it, they call it a heavy dry brush so you're not painting you're more kind of dry brushing and then I started and I kind of did with it you know up up the wall up against the grain so to speak of the siding and then that kind of hit the highlights and then I would notice okay where are some areas that I want to you know kind of get some more paint or something like that and I actually went this way a little bit as well and then they recommend using a circular motion, which really does work. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you, but you know, whenever you do that, there's some areas that are heavier in paint. Okay. Well, if you do a couple things, if you try going this way, again, it's light. You're, you're not putting paint on. You'll you'll notice it won't paint it. It'll kind of fill in, and it's really hard to see. You'll it'll fill in the clapboard. And then what you can do, if you have a heavy area where maybe it looks like a little too much of a straight line or you know it looks kind of odd again you dip it in you kind of dry it off and then you come in with a circular motion you're not drawing circles you're just kind of and it works it really is kind of cool I mean this Bob Van Gelder guy knows his stuff so you kind of do it, do it in, in a circular motion again it doesn't paint it kind of fills in and then feathers out where you might have had a little bit heavy so See right there, it looks a little bit heavy. See so here, so it's, I probably now I'm looking at the camera. See if I look at it not through the lens of the camera, I don't notice that. But if I wanted to, I'm not too worried about it. You come back in and you would kind of blend in. You said a little bit sticking down. You could blend that in with a circular motion. So, but again, I, I don't even notice that until I was looking at it through the through the camera here. So that's the first level. Now the next layer of paint they recommend it is a white so I do have some of the ones that they recommend a white wash and an antique white I think I'll go with the white wash same thing maybe not as heavy at least I'm gonna try it lighter you can always build things up so I'll try it same technique you, know, you still start with the, with the white kind of nice you know dry brush and start kind of going up like this and I want to be careful because I don't want to paint it white again you just want to kind of hit the highlights and pull out some of the details you're trying to give it depth which I think it's gonna look pretty cool I mean you can almost stop here and it doesn't look bad at all uh, but okay let's try this other layer and see how that winds up alrighty so I've got the walls on the South River kit pretty much done weathered uh, I put uh, nail holes put a light wash of, of Alejo acrylic wash a gray color to kind of sink in and settle in the nail holes. I don't know how well it's going to show up on here, but you may be able to notice it a little bit. And now what I need to do is get a sign on the building. I think it kind of looks cool, you know, from that era 
when they had these cool signs on the on the side of this type of facilite. Now you can see the one that's on the prototype, and it's obviously a New England, and it's the name of the actual building that they modeled. That's great. Well, I'm not in New England, and I want to make it more local to kind of fit, you know, my layout. And in doing some research, there actually was, and still is, as a matter of fact, a, a bulk feed supply out in Lake City, Pennsylvania, called H.W. Niger. They've been around for a long time. Uh, they, they were around in the era that I'm modeling. Actually, their webpage has got some cool photographs, only two very old, you know, probably old slides or prints that they, that they scanned of the facility with a sign on the side of the building and actually covered hoppers that are from Central Soya. So I actually have a prototype as well for the type of rail car to bring in here. So I figured, okay. Now they weren't in Fairview, which is where this is going, but it is a local name of an actual local, you know, feeds. They were more doing feed supplies. They, like, they, they were, a, I guess, a distributor, you know, working with Central Soya, which I think was out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. A pretty popular con uh, company at the time, but close enough for me. So what I did was kind of go into, you know, our good friend Google, look around. Like I said, I found the actual website for H.W. Niger, and, and I'm kind of copying the sign that was on their building. It does have the 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 blue border with the definite, definite feeds for definite needs that's on that sign. Five stars across the bottom. The color might not be exact right. I might not have the font quite right just yet. But I don't know how well I'm going to be able to match it. I'm only doing this in PowerPoint. So I don't have a whole lot of... Well, actually, there's a lot of options. But I might play around and see if I can find a font that matches better. Um, Master Mix was kind of the Central Soya, uh, you know, logo or brand name or what they, you know, what they used. And, and that is on the sign. So I, I, I got an image of that and brought it onto the sign. I'm rewording things just a little bit because, again, they were, at the time... H.W. Uh, Niger was more of just a feed supply. Well, I'm saying they do grinding, mixing, which is on the original sign, and farm supply. And then down below, they just had bulk feed service. Well, I'm going to add industrial supplies. What the heck? You know, we, that way, they, they can get covered hoppers, you know, with, with uh, bulk feed. They can get, you know, tractors, tractors and farm implements on flat cars. Uh, and then, of course, other just industrial supplies that people come to buy stuff. So... Gives me kind of a, a nice little local flavor, as well as, you know, some pretty cool loads could come into this facility. So, that's what I'm thinking of doing, and this is the sign. It's almost the same size. You can see there's the, the kit sign. Uh, theirs comes up, and it's angled here. Well, mine's might just be, because the, the prototype sign is a rectangle. I, I don't want to try to mess with it. I'm not trying to do that in PowerPoint anyway, so I'll keep it rectangular. I actually got it to fit pretty darn good on the side of the building not sure if that's maybe a little bit too large i could always scale that down a little bit and again the fonts aren't perfect a perfect match but you know if you came in and saw this would you know unless i showed you a photograph and then would you really care you know <laughs> yeah you know what i mean let's be honest this i think really conveys a nice local flavor and to me it would make sense once i get it on and get it weathered you know toned down a little bit i, I think it might look pretty good so i might go with this uh, front and back, even though the back side won't be seen, I'll probably print two of these, put one on the back, which would be this particular side here. That's the back side. This might all fall down. So that would sit right there. But I'll do the back one first to, to try it and make sure, because if I mess it up, I'd rather mess up the back side where you're really not going to see it. And, and then hopefully learn from my mistakes. <laughs> and I'm sure I'll make them before I put the one on the, on the front side which will be very visible right in the front of the layout. Okay, so sign. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm even thinking of on the other extension. This is the, that comes after this here. You know, on this one here, I make kind of cool. I'm going to make it more work for myself. but put a dry transfer on there, you know, H.W. Niger Supply Company or something like that with, uh, you know, the Woodland Scenics dry transfers. That might look pretty cool. Nice and faded. Or maybe even across the end, you know, across the end here, H.W. Niger or something like that. Just to add a little more flavor to the building. So we'll see. All right. Let's see if I can uh, finalize this. 
and then the next thing is to get the the signs on the trim on uh, and then the building itself starts going together woohoo all right more to come as we uh, progress here all right just some more fun here this is with the laser modeling 3 kit I'm looking ahead trying to get some things done uh, since I'm waiting for the interior before I can really continue on the main building so I said oh I can I can do the work on the walls and you know maybe even build the build the little boiler room that comes with it eh, okay well now as you recall these are the pieces that were really warped these frame pieces I mean bad they did settle down a little bit but not quite enough so what I actually had to do was cut the one that was real bad and, and re-glue it in although I would have had to anyway because if you look at it you can see the way it's sitting there hopefully that's gonna focus okay see I had to move it over because it wasn't framed to the window quite quite right everything else was kind of framed okay but that was definitely off a little bit so I just cut it it was warped as crazy like crazy anyway moved it over and re-glued it in um, this piece was okay it's kind of settled in nice and was fine now they did you'll see some modifications here what happened was they sent a letter some point after I purchased the kit here's the letter I'm not gonna read it but basically there's a couple pieces that were wrong and one that was missing what they did here's the original boiler room sidewall and this is the new one that they sent you can definitely see and they said you know, they, they rearranged it so the window fits the framing better true very true that really would have been an issue you would try to put that on and go what the heck all right so that's the old piece so go away okay that's fine but oh no sorry and they also sent this piece which they forgot to include in the kit okay so thank you very much i really appreciate that they actually did that that's actually kind of cool because i would have been like what the heck that you know did i lose it i wouldn't have known what was going on anyway well the frame piece that they give you it didn't fit quite right because at the top the way it originally came it would have gone all all the way to the top which would have covered these rafter openings so initially I cut it I glued it on here cut the bottom off and then reattached the bottom piece to, to enable the room for these rafter pieces to fit and then I go to assemble it and the way they had this frame fit and it was all the way out to the edge and there wasn't that little notch for the wall to fit this one had this little notch here you can see the other walls have it you know kind of to help align things those two have it this piece did not have it the new piece in fact the old piece itself didn't have it either here's the old piece so again you know neither one of them had the notch although that window would have been an issue with it anyway so I said, okay, what do I do? Because you kind of need that to, to assemble it. So I just went ahead and, as you can see, I with this, I measured on here. I cut the notch. I had to cut off this side of the frame, the original frame. I, I just glued in a new piece of 4x4. Four four. It's close. And then I put a new piece of 4x4 four four in here. Now, all this was glued on, of course. I, I didn't look ahead. So I had to very carefully come in and trim off the original piece that was on there. It came off fine with a real sharp exacto blade and some real slow movements. And then sanding it, I got it. It's fine. Now, I'm probably not even going to stain these because I'm so tired of this damn alcohol wash I'm putting on everything. It's really getting on my nerves. So, <laughs> so good enough. So thank you, Laser Modeling 3, for making me do a little bit of work here. But uh, we figured it out. And like I said, now... Uh, Sorry, I'm going to turn up, switch my hands here. And, you know, this will then fit appropriately in there with the notch. It's going to line up on the outside. It'll line up out here. Nice. I, I did have to trim this, or sand this tab a little bit so it's flush for when you put the trim on the wall eventually. So, just a note, you know, start looking at things. And I guess, it, I guess what I'm learning is you really ought to test fit everything before you glue it. And look how things all made up. Because I, I got to this point, and I was like, I'm, I'm just going to play with it. And then I was like, oh, you know, this wall will not go to this wall. It's not going to fit. So I had to add that little notch. So a little bit of extra work, not too hard. You know, it's just freaking strip wood and, and, and you know, clapboard siding, so it cuts easy. 
So okay, so FYI, that's that. So now I can go ahead and uh, we'll get rid of the old piece. Not good for anything. And then go ahead and probably get the boiler room put together. Yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not even going to worry about it because at the corner, you're going to view it from this side. You're not even going to see that corner. So close enough. Good enough. Done. All right. Enough whining. That was definitely a wine fest, wasn't it? So, <laughs> all right. Back to work. All right. Welcome back to a frustrating update. So, <laughs> oh, last night was not a good night. Anyway, all right. So kind of where I am on this. Uh, what have I done? Well, let's see. Well, you can see I got the bases for the South River kit done. One's a concrete base that's been primed, painted with my chalk white and weathered a little bit. Here's the brick part that was painted with uh, Tamiya, their red oxide or zinc chromate primer, and then some dabs of other paint, and then some um, a wash of the chalk white for the mortar. All right, so they're done. I did also paint the other, you can see them over there, the bases for the coal silos and the base for the coal pit for the silos. And I just realized that's another freaking science project for how to install that in the layout. Um, for the laser th modeling kit, I had to make all these windows. You had to take some titchies and cut them, cut the little tabs off and sand them and then glue them together. That was fun during uh, Sunday night football. All the other windows... I know it's dark, but you don't really care. Um, <laughs> they're all the windows painted for the South River kit. And what I did for that, because I'm freaking lazy, and I didn't feel like painting windows by hand. Can you sense a little frustration here as I do a quick zoom over here? All right, I used a nice Russian green of the Vallejo Hobby Paints. I like, again, they're good paints. They're, you know, they're... they're very fine, nice and flat. And again, of course, they weren't around when the instructions for these kits were written. So I'm using things that I like to use. So they're done. And then <laughs> here, here's where the frustration sets in. Well, let me start over here. And this could be my lack of experience. But uh, I also started working on the boiler room for the Laser 3 kit. All right, great. And I... Put the walls together, and I think I might have shown another segment of how I had to modify things. And these walls were warping like crazy. I don't know. I must be using, like, extra warping alcohol or something like that. <laughs> so, you know, I got upset, and then I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to go back in, and I added in some heavier strip wood that I had in in, the, in my wood, wood box. And it, it worked. Now, they're they're way too big. I get it. I don't care. Because you're not really going to see them that well. But it did straighten the walls out. So now everything's nice. So I did it all on all, all of these walls. Um, the base is... Uh, I just painted that with my concrete color. Put a light wash to kind of bring out the lines. Good enough. Maybe I'll weather some more. But again, that's not going to be real visible. Alright, so again, the, these are warped central. So I had to fix them. And it worked out pretty well. Pretty happy with that. Yeah, no, that's way too big. But I did paint them. And when I painted them... I used the home roll paint because, you know, that's an enamel. I don't want to use an acrylic because knowing my luck, they'll start warping like freaking crazy. So whatever home roll number 29 is, that's what I painted it with. I just grabbed one, said close enough, good enough for me. I also made the stairs. And that I sprayed with the Vallejo, a black paint. And then painted the railings this same home roll color. I had it out. I said, looks good to me, fine, paint them, done. Next. So, <laughs> um, now, these walls fixed up nice. These walls, pardon my pan here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, so for the main building, uh, I wasn't quite as lucky. Um, these are warped. Uh, it, <laughs> now, the ends are okay. I think they're going to be fine. And I did, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to prove this to you. I did exactly what the instructions said. Where does it say it? I'm going to point to you here just so you don't think I'm crazy. All right, right there. Prepare the four outer walls by submerging them in a dish of AI. That's their secret code for the, for the uh, alcohol mix. Making sure both sides are covered. I did that. I actually did that. Place them between paper towels and heavy weight. I did that. Let them sit overnight. I did that. You take them apart and 
boing, they're all warped like freaking crazy, so I, I give up. Um, <laughs> can you sense the frustration? Just these walls. Um, now, there's no bracing on them whatsoever, because uh, this kit has the lovely pleasure of installing 2x4, actually 2x6. I take the back, that's a little bit better, right? Inside. You can see this, the scribe lines, and that's where you're supposed to put them all in. But, before you do that, oh, I've got to do the freaking uh, nail holes on this. Oh, great, that's another hour worth of work. All right, anyway. Um, but put all the windows in, get that all done, then flip it over and start putting all those in. Now, that might help pull some of that out. And you can't really brace this like you could on move my sign for a moment. You know, on the uh, South River kit, which really isn't designed for an interior, you can brace the crap out of that. But this, you know, since it's got the floors to it and outside rafters and everything, you got to be careful. You just can't start slapping, you know, one eighth square wood in there because you you'll be you'll be cursing even more than I am now. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, no, we'll play with that. I'm sure I'll make it work somehow. And I'm sure when it glues together, it, hopefully it'll... It's getting better. I did have it under weights. But, uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, so you want to build a craftsman kit, huh? Yeah. Have fun with that. Now, on these, on this, on the South River kit, just to show this, I did... I did add some more bracing. Because this one was warped, so I added two more long pieces, but they're fine. And then, around here... See that at the bottom? That's for the floor. Because I'm going to have this open. The door's open. And might be easier just to do another quick pan. Alright, so here on the... Oh, you can't see crap. Alright. Um, so basically, this door, this door will be open. Maybe that door. So all in here, which are the walls I just showed you, it's going to have a floor. So I'll put an interior floor. I added a new door here at the end. Alright, that'll be open. So I can do some, some interior details. Then I added some more here to put a ceiling. And then I added some more up top to put a ceiling on top of the second story. So that... Hold the camera straight. So that I could add some lights. Probably not details up here. Because these windows are small. But maybe it's a, you know, a nice little light to show that there's, there's some people in there working. Or something like that. So that is what... As I carefully pan back. Do, 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 do. All this is. See? So here at this end, there's the strip wood for the floor, for the ceiling, and for that ceiling. So it'll be a floor, a floor on part of it. There is a partition that goes here on the interior that I can use to, to make the floor for the second for this these offices here. So between here and here somewhere, that being the end wall, I'll do something inside. So that's just the way I like to do it. And I'll make all that and cut it and fit it before I glue it together, otherwise you'll never fit things in, because I do have to notch them out around some of this stuff. So, okay, so that's enough babbling. That's that. Like I said, this kit's pretty much ready now to really start jamming this assembly together, but, oh, I did, um, I finished up my signs. Sign, sign, everywhere a sign. I, I, I modified the font a little bit, I realized that this and this were actually red, um, so I, I think I have that pretty well set to go on the building. Just got to cut them out and get them on. I have a couple other signs. Again, some more Master Mix signs. And there's a little sign that I found that's got, like, prices for various things. That could look cool on the side of this. So, again, so this adds a little bit of a local flavor. You know, the uh, H.W. Niger was the actual company in Lake City. Again, I'm kind of taking some license and moving it to Fairview and making it a supply company, not a milling company, but whatever. Local. Okay. All right. So now, now what? Now, oh, I do have, welcome to the Babble Fest. Laser modeling does make a really nice interior boiler for this, like they do for the main building, that I should have bought, but I didn't. But, I do have this. This is one of the American model builders see that there kit 106 horizontal tube multi tube boiler yes i was going to sell it for 21 dollars. i didn't i knew i had it. it took me 45 damn minutes to find it but i did find it it was at the bottom of a freaking drawer 
So I'm probably going to use this for the interior. Because this has got some real nice big windows. It is going to be in the front of the layout. You will be able to see it. Uh, it's got a nice you know, light in here. So I, I will do that. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this a little bit. And then i got to do all these darn windows for the uh, laser modeling kit. I think I'm just going to, I'm going to pick, again, I'm going to do a slow pan here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, good old Vallejo. I've got a couple earth, tan, pans are yellow that I'm going to, I'm going to pick one and say, you know what, good enough. And I'm going to spray the damn windows and be done with it. I'm not going to sit there and hand paint them because I just don't feel like it. And it's just way too much work. So, It'll match pretty well the uh, the building siding. I've already kind of checked it, so I have an idea what I'm going to do. I may come back in with a sponge and some, you know, maybe a, a darker color, uh, ruster, you know, dark rust type color, and then sponge them. Look at like they're peeling a little bit. That's cool. I can do that. But I'm not going to come in here and, and sponge every one of these, which is the way the instructions suggest they do. That's the way they did it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to. I'm. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to pick a good color. I'm going to put them all on a piece of cardboard. I'm going to take out the garage and spray it. Pfft, done. All right, so enough babbling, whining, etc., etc. Sorry you had to hear all this. But uh, just more fun when you build these kits. <laughs> and again, some of this can be my, my inexperience in actually building these kits. But don't think that if you're, you know, people that build these, this, this video could have been uh, your typical YouTube video. Everything's nice and rosy and gumdrops and lollipops and... It's a great experience. No, it's not. It's frustrating. There definitely is some frustration. There's issues with the instructions. There's mistakes that I've made. There's things warping like crazy. So it, just expect it. That's okay. You work through it. You figure out what you're going to do. You solve the problem and you move ahead. I'm still looking forward to building these. I'm not upset at all that I started to build these. But just don't think everything's as rosy as uh, as it might sound. If you read a, you know, a blog or a website... The advertisements for the kits, they're nice kits, but they do take some work, and they can be frustrating. Anyway, all right, back to work, and more to come, and hopefully I feel uh, much less frustrated. Okay, I took an afternoon away from warping walls, and uh, <laughs> built that little boiler. So it's sitting in there. I'm actually, gonna, It's not perfect, eh, well, whatever, but you know. You can see that smoke's like out. That's kind of kind of kind of wampus. <laughs> Won't matter though. When, you, when the stack goes on, you can make it go up straight. So you're not really even going to see that. That's going to be up on the rafters. But what I did here, there's the kit sitting pretty much where I think it's going to be. I'm trying to you know figure out how they would align the darn thing to. Uh, there's a door out of the building here. There's a door, oops, sorry, there's a door from the outside here. You obviously need some kind of aisle way to get around and do maintenance and use the darn thing. So I figured I'd kind of scooch it toward the building and back. Uh, so that way there can maybe be a little workbench out here, you know, something. And then here on the side, just for fun, <laughs> added a couple signs, added a, uh, I figured there's going to be some kind of maintenance log on something like this. So that's actually as close as I can get, 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. <laughs> Operation log, I don't know what will what, be on that, just something to you know, make it look fancy. Alright, so that's done. And then once the windows all dry up, I'll probably go ahead and make this, get that secured in. Um, add maybe a couple tools laying around in there, you know, just something like that. Because you will, again, if you notice, you will be able to see in that. That's the You'll, you'll be able to see on that side and this side will be the aisle side. So you're definitely going to be able to get a look in there. They're, you know, they're nice big windows. So I'll go ahead and add a couple details in there just for fun. Since it will be so close to the aisle. So Alright. So, boiler's done. The windows are drying up. Now I think it's time to move on to whoo, trying to get the sign on the South River kit. Which will be, again, my version of do, do, do. That sign. Okay. More to come. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Okay. What an interesting day. Um, probably the most nervous I've ever been doing something model roading really. I don't know why, but putting these signs on really had me, it really had me pause for a while. But what I did, 
you know, I went through how I made them and put them off and I cut them out. Cut them around the blue bear, the uh, the blue area. And then I started on the back because if I was going to mess up, I wanted to mess up on the back. And I didn't really know how to put the glue down or what type of glue to use. In the instructions, they recommend a glue stick. But I'm thinking, man, I, I don't know about that. Only because, at least not the ones that I have, you know, you try to rub that on the back of that thing, even just a piece of paper, and it's going to be, I think, interesting. So, what I decided to do, I laid it down, I took some 180 grit sandpaper and sanded the back of it. They recommend 120, I don't have it, I had 180, so that's what I used. Got it nice and thin, um, they also just recommend doing the edges, but I did the whole thing. I think it's going to settle in, you'd want it to be as thin as possible. And then what I did, I had the, the sign laid down on a piece of cardboard, and I took some canopy glue, good old canopy glue. I didn't want to use white glue because I thought it might be a little bit too thick. Of course, I could have thinned it a little bit, but then you get more water. And anyway, so I had that laying down. I took a brush and brushed the canopy glue over the back of the sign. And sure enough, it started to curl a little bit. So, oh, okay. So then I picked it up with a pair of tweezers, and you can see that's where it got a little damage there at the bottom. And I very carefully, I knew where I wanted it. So then I very carefully came in, laid it in, lined it up across one of the clapboards here on the top, laid it out, pressed it down, and it, and it was okay. I said it did tear a little bit down here because it was getting kind of, kind of, you know, thin and, and the glue was starting to get into it. And so I did kind of mess up a little bit down there. But. I got it in, and I got it settled, and, you know, pushed it in, then came by with a semi-dull, which they recommend, <laughs> semi-dull, like number 17 blade, uh, whatever this one is here, this is an old one that I had laying around, and then I very carefully, once it's set up for a little bit, literally went across every clapboard, and you can see it, you, you, I, I, I wear magnifiers, but you'll get in there, you'll see it, you'll come across right across the the clapboards and it snuggles it in there pretty nice so that's how I did the back one then for the front one I'm thinking man there's gotta be a is there an easier way to do this so what I actually did believe it or not was I had this laying down actually this way in my makeshift studio here and then I knew where I wanted it to go and I very carefully marked it and what I did, believe it or not, was actually <laughs> take a brush and I and I painted the canopy glue right onto the, the, the building. All the way across, you know, got it in there, knew where it was to be, and it's easy to do if you're careful. Line it up with the exact clapboards. That way the sign wasn't didn't have any glue on it. And then I started here at the top, lined it up. And then very carefully just kind of let it lay down and then kind of, you know, rub, rubbed it in. And then the same thing after it set up for a little while, I went back with the, with the edge of this right along the clapboards. And these are the results so far. Now, they still recommend, and what I probably will still do, come in with some 600 grit sandpaper, steel wool, kind of sand it, you know, kind of try to, you know, start to do some of the fading of the sign. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll probably start that next. Probably tomorrow, because I want to let this sit and not ruin it today. Because <laughs> I'm actually proud of myself for getting them done. They actually look okay. A little bit of dirt on them, I think, because my hands are a little bit dirty. Uh, you know, but th that doesn't look bad at all, I don't think. Um, <laughs> I actually kind of like it. I'm proud of myself. So I will do some tomorrow with the real, real fine sandpaper if I have some, some steel wool. They recommend another AI wash. I'm not doing that. I'm not putting another damn bit of liquid on these things. Uh, maybe some, you know, pigments or something like that to tone them down a little bit. But I am not going to put anything wet on them again. Because knowing my luck, it'll just totally ruin it. Then I also made a sign here. I was looking through a Blair line set of custom signs, and they had that. Now, that symbol is actually... Central Soya. 
Central Soya is kind of the, I guess you call it the parent company um, that that the HW Niger company worked for, probably one of their distributors. And Master Mix was one of their earlier brands, earlier brands or current, I don't know, anyway, that fit because it's an, what I'm saying what happened here is this building, which is in Fairview, used to be the Fairview Supply. It was purchased by uh, H.W. Niger, uh, originally from Lake City, Pennsylvania. They're trying to expand a little bit. So they bought it. And then Central Soya sent them a brand new sign and said, put this on the side of the building. And then what I did, you'll notice, you know, it does have H.W. Niger. So I, I cut a piece of paper out, printed it off, and glued it on to replace what was on the original Blair Line sign. It's a like farmer supply company or something like that, something different. So I said, no, okay, so what the company does is Central Soya sends these signs out to all their distributors and says, you put your company name down below, but we want our, you know, our new master mix and the new logo on the sign. Now, I don't know what year this came out. It was probably in the 60s. I really don't know because the original symbol for that is something different. Uh, close, but not quite that for Central Soya. Anyway, so... Moral of the story, it all ties together. It's Central Soya is, is kind of the main company. H.W. Uh, Niger is one of their distributors. They have the sign, which has the old, kind of the old uh, sign and logo for the company. That's the newer one. They're not going to make them repaint it. But <laughs> but anyway, so that's, that's what I did there to kind of customize. Again, I wanted to have a local flavor. So this is the local... You know, H.W. Niger's, oh man, they've been in Lake City for decades. Still there, as a matter of fact. So anyone that comes in from a local area that's into that will certainly recognize the name. They might say, why are they over in Fairview? But, but anyway, but again, I'm a little, little bit of modeler's license on that. All right, so that's that. And let me show you one more thing I did for the other building. All right, so for this building, did the same thing. Um, they do supply you with a decal, but of course it's the Winchenden, and I don't, I don't want that. I wanted some local. So I renamed to the Vernondale. Vernondale is like a little, one of those little, probably a crossroads way, way, way back in the day, right around me, that probably if you ask, you know, nine to ten people around here don't even know that Vernondale was even a town around here, but it was. So this is the Vernondale Machine Company, and I had to go up on the printer, of course, or a computer, and kind of figure out the font. The font's very similar to what came with the kit on the decal. So it looks really similar. There's slight differences. Um, this text is outlined in a nice dark blue color. Very similar to the decal. The decal is only done on one side of the lettering, but okay, so what? So I did the same thing. And of course, the decal would have been clear. And of course, I had to print it on a piece of paper. So it looks like I painted on you know, sign more, so to speak, so, but again, same thing, uh, put the glue on the, on the, on the siding, laid it in there very carefully, because it's a long sign, so I had to be very careful how I lined it up, got it lined up, got it down, took the knife, across the clapboards, and I'm just waiting to do the sanding and other weathering, and then I also added one here to the, to the front of the building, similar font, smaller size, but you know, did the same same technique and now to get it all weathered up and everything so that's that is that so that was a large part of today was going through that and uh, I did some more other work on the windows and whatnot but that's that's pretty much what I did today so that's that and then literally that when I was doing it on the first building when I was gonna go do this one for the first time I literally sat here and looked at it for like 10 minutes because <laughs> I was so nervous <laughs> All right, anyway, but, hey, you got to try these techniques, and you can't be afraid to do this kind of stuff. Of course, I could have done it on a scrap, you know, piece of uh, siding, because all you got to do is print another sign. I'm not a big deal if you ruin a sign. But if I had ruined this, I would have been a little upset. I probably could have got it off. I don't know if I could have got it off or not. Anyway, it worked out okay, so I'm very happy that I did it, and we're going to continue on uh, forging ahead here. Okay, there you go. Major, major update here. Got all the walls for both kits done. 
all the windows are installed signs details at least that I'm gonna do for now are done <clears throat> so time to slap these babies together but just to kind of show what we have here here's the laser modeling 3 Winchenden machine company that I've renamed into the Vernondale machine company ready to go including the walls for the boiler room and they see the boiler that's going to be inside and some of the ancillary goodies there stairs and other doors and whatnot ready to go I'm still waiting for the interior detail parts that I ordered for that so that may be a little bit until I can actually put walls on but I do have a bunch of furniture to make so that's gonna be enjoyable and then over here on the South River kit H.W. Myers that I've renamed as the H.W. Niger Supply Company based on a company out in Lake City, Pennsylvania. It's all done. Again, all the windows are done. All oh, the acetate. Ugh. And for this darn kit, I had to cut it all. That was really enjoyable. At least for the Winchenden, the Laser Modeling 3 kit, the acetate was cut already for the windows. Still, that's my one weak point. Full disclosure, guys. I am not very good at doing windows. If you would look real close, you'd go, man, you really ought to lighten up on some of that uh, canopy glue, boy. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. Other items over here, again, both of the foundations are done. The windows are in the concrete foundation. That's ready to go. The silo base and the base for the coal pit, they're all done. Other small little walls for the various paraphernalia on the building are ready so now it's a matter of getting these together although what I'm probably gonna work on now I'm gonna do a little bit I'm gonna show you some of the other shenanigans that went on here some of the things that I did just for completeness but I think after that what I'm gonna do is then work on this and get the floors cut and everything make sure I get the building nice and square because this one I can actually start raising the walls if I really really wanted to so all right a uh, quick pause. Let me just show you some of the things I've done here just to capture it for uh, posterity in the video. Alrighty, so for the South River kit, I didn't cover a lot of this before, but just in summary, I'm going to add in the door here at this end. That's going to be one of the Grant Line warehouse doors. And then this sign was added. Uh, it's kind of it's a scratch built sign I put on there. I even had a nut bolt washers around it because it's so large. Obviously, it can't hang because my nails. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the sign that's sent. You know, the concept being that uh, H.W. Niger purchased the Fairview Supply Company, and then they sent them this new sign, and I had to add you know, the, the custom name down below to the Blair Line sign. This here has been painted out. That you did say Fairview Supply, but they painted it out. They haven't repainted it yet because they just haven't. Um, this and this door obviously are going to be open. This is another one of the same Grant Line doors. This is one of the sliding doors from the kit that's, that was originally on the back wall. I moved to the front wall. That's, I thought it looked kind of cool. And I don't know if it's going to show up here if I'll be able to focus, but I did add some details to it. I used one of the... That's actually a tortoise throw wire for the door slide. And then I added some blocks at the end, added some, these are little triangle door stops here, because I had to add that, because one day, the guys got a little bit aggressive on second shift and threw the door off the hinge, off the track and everything, so I said, oh, good lord, so they had to add stops, so all the details have been done, I did frame it in there, you can see some framing, it just didn't look right, just with the, you know, the bare walls, so I figured, yeah, okay, I'll frame it out, make it look interesting, I guess. And then all the other windows, again, I mentioned I'm not the great the greatest window doer. It's probably hard to see, but if you look real close, there's plenty of canopy glue in the corners. <laughs> Oops. So, those two walls are pretty much ready to go. And the only other, I didn't really do much else on the back. I already showed that piece. I did modify the doors a little bit. But let's take a look at the... <laughs> The other kit for some of the absolute insanity that I went through. Now, for the Laser Modeling 3, the Winchenden Machine Company kit. Alright, what they have you do 
once you get the windows on the front side, which again are here with plenty of gobs of glue on them, they actually on the interior walls, believe it or not, they have individual studs. Now, this is something I would not done before. Pardon me when I flip this bad boy. And I said, okay, so I got the kit. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Although I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. As I was doing this, I'm saying, why in the world am I doing this? I, I, I doubt it'll ever be visible. And I tend to be somewhat practical, I think, in that if you're not going to see it, you know, why am I taking the time to do it? But I did. I did. I went through and glued these damn freaking studs on edge on three of the four walls. I'm not going to lie to you. The wall that's, that you're going to look through facing the layout, I did not do. Sorry, I just don't feel like spending my life doing this. But I did it. So now I can say I actually put these darn little studs on. Even to the point, and just to prove my point, like why, why did I do this? See up there in the very top of the eave? You're never going to freaking see that. In fact, you're never even going to see these because there's a there's a there's a, a floor across here, and then the roof. I mean, why did I waste my time doing it anyway? <laughs> you know what I mean? You are never ever going to know. The only people who are going to know about this are you, gentle viewers, watching this video, and that assumes you make it this far into this darn blab fest. So I did it. I did the uh, the two end walls the same. Here's the other end wall. Again, now I'm okay with the eave piece. That makes perfect sense. But all the other pieces, I still, I'm like, why did I do that? And what it took me about two hours to do these two last evening. And I did this one this morning. It took me about two hours to do it. And like, I'm done. I'm not doing it. So for the front wall, this is the wall that you're, that's going to be facing the aisle that you're actually going to look through these windows. Like, are you going to see those studs on the back? I doubt it, but okay. So I did add a little bit of bracing to this, but not a lot, just to add some bracing. That's it. That's all I'm doing on that wall. Sorry, take away my master model railroader. Uh, <laughs> not that I even have one, but uh, I know I'm a, I'm a terrible, heinous model railroader for not doing that. But again, and I'm, I'm not even sure you're going to see the other stuff because the way this building works... You know, you're going to look into it from this side. Try to get a little bit more light here. Not very light, but you know what I mean? Are you are you going to be able to look through the windows and see the studs on the two end walls on that far wall? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, I, but I did it. Just for the sake of completion and, and, and to certify myself as absolutely insane, I went ahead and did it. Uh, so that's ready to go. So these, this, again, this is pretty much ready to go together. I did do a little bit of work. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get some light on this over here just to show it. On the base for the boiler room, I did extend it a little bit. Because, again, I, the instructions say these walls should go outside the base. But if I set it up and put it on, they're not going to fit outside the base. And looking at the photographs, the photographs in the instruction book really aren't all that good. They're not all that large, so it's kind of hard to tell. But it looks to me like it's actually sitting on it. Well, if I do that, this base isn't quite big enough. So I just extended it a wee bit here, about an eighth of an inch at the outside edge. That's just, just so the walls sit nice and flush when it sits on it. And then for all these windows, I also noticed I don't really like, I don't know how well it'll be visible, but Anyway, it's not lined up straight, but I don't like the way the the windows fit in the opening. Like, the opening should have been a little bit smaller, and the frames don't fit very nice. But anyway, I, again, it's going to be a little bit harder to see. Just I was a little, a little surprised for the caliper of the kit that the, the fit wasn't that good. And I did go ahead and get the openings there for those windows. I actually went in and cut the uh, acetate out where that window opens, right? Because you shouldn't have glass behind that. So for the three that are open, I went in and then carefully cut that acetate out so there's actually open window there behind it. Because that's the way it should be, eh? <laughs> and then again, I got the boiler ready to go. So this little room can actually go together. And it might work on this as well. But I think, like I said, the next thing I want to do, just to kind of repeat a little bit, but coming back over to the 
South River kit is get the floors ready for this because I'm going to have the interior details here and here. This is the end wall that goes out there. So this end of it is going to have a floor, a ceiling, and then another ceiling above it, or a floor slash ceiling, and a ceiling. Probably just some lights for one of those offices, but they, these will be detailed on the interior with lights. And I got, of course, do exterior lights and all kinds of other shenanigans. Um, oh, I did cover up one window to say something happened to it. You know, again, because these buildings have to have some kind of life to them. You know what I mean? It's like they're not just static. Things happen. So I decided to make it look like something oopsie happened up there, and they went ahead and they didn't want to replace it. They just put a piece of plywood over it. So, all right. Let's get to work and uh, more. Are you guys actually still still following this? I don't know how long this video is going to be, but good Lord, this could be a marathon session of of interest. Is it of interest to anybody out there? Oh, well, hey, I'm having fun. All right, more to come. Mm -hmm.